Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be doing a little bit of an update on the M87 black hole that you see right here in the middle of the galaxy M87. As you may already know, I think pretty much everyone by now knows, this is the black hole that we've received the image of from the EHT, also known as the Event Horizon Telescope. In the last few weeks uh, there have been a few updates and there have also been a lot of talk about things that we haven't really learned about this black hole or really about any black holes. Now what exactly is it that we've learned and what is it that we haven't learned from this particular observation? Welcome to What The Math. And let's start with the first edition, and that's of course the name for M87 Ultramassive Black Hole. It's now a kind of more or less officially known as Powehi. This is um, a Hawaiian term, and um, a lot of objects that were discovered by um, telescopes in Hawaii were normally named after some sort of a Hawaiian deity or something related to Hawaiian folk culture. And in this case, Powehi um, has a meaning, and the meaning is the embellished dark source of unending creation. And that's kind of a pretty good um, summary of any black hole in a sense. So we have a name. What else do we know about this black hole? Well, a lot of people have actually been wondering why is it that we chose to um, image this particular black hole and not, as promised, Sagittarius A star in the middle of our own Milky Way. And the answer to that is simple. We actually have imaged uh, Sagittarius A star, but there is a slight problem with our own um, supermassive black hole. It's not as big as this one right here. And because it's not as big and because it's not as massive, the actual accretion disk that you see right here moves a lot faster and thus produces a much blurrier image. And so for this reason, uh, it was actually chosen that M87 is going to be the center of the attention and also was the one studied because the actual accretion disk here takes a much longer time to move. As a matter of fact, um, things here move at around um, 1000 kilometers per second, but even that takes a long time. And because of how slow the accretion disk moves here, now HT has promised a new amazing thing. They're actually working on producing a video of the super, or I guess in this case, ultra-massive black hole absorbing matter and eating everything up. And it's going to be absolutely incredible because it's going to be the first ever video produced. And it's only possible because of the mass of this black hole and because the accretion disk here moves so, so slowly. And just to give you an idea of how slow it moves, they're planning to take a picture or essentially capture data uh, from this region every 24 hours and they expect this image to not change throughout the 24 hour period. And they're going to be producing um, every frame every 24 hours and even with a year of observation, um, assuming that they observed for 360 days, they're going to have about maybe, I guess, six seconds of footage, um, assuming that it's played at 60 frames per second. Now, that essentially means that um, things here don't really change as much, and this is why this black hole is much better to study than our own Sagittarius A star. Even though technically, if you were to compare them in terms of size um, in the night skies, uh, this one is about half as big, but it's just easier to see things here. We've also discovered that uh, this is a black hole that spins pretty fast, and um, because of this, it creates some really unusual effects. Now, I'm going to talk more about this particular effect in the video that's coming out a little bit later this week, uh, because it sort of deserves its own video and there's a lot of things to explain here. But because of this spin, uh, because of the way that this black hole actually rotates, it um, drags the space-time around it, thus, in a sense, producing a ridiculous effect around itself. Um, the best way to explain this is think Miller planet in interstellar. Maybe not to that extreme, but the time itself around this black hole slows down pretty dramatically. More about this later, but for now just know that this is a pretty cool discovery. But there are also a lot of questions that have not been answered, and um, unfortunately there's a lot more of those questions. And one of those questions is that we still don't really understand how in this case, this particular uh, black hole Sagittarius A star, but also the black hole that I just showed you, Powehi, um, were created because these black holes acquired a lot of mass really quickly and we can't really explain how or why. 
in most of these cases, uh, these black holes seem to have too much mass to actually just naturally grow. And if they were so-called primordial black holes, in other words, if they were born with the universe itself, we also don't really know why. We can't explain how or why they were created. So their origin is still a big mystery, and unfortunately all the data we've collected didn't really help us understand how these unusual but super scary massive giants were created. There is also no unfortunate evidence or observation of the so-called Hawking radiation that uh, Stephen Hawking proposed uh, decades ago. And this, of course, refers to the idea that um, even though we call these things black holes, technically they do have radiation. But the more massive the black hole is, the less radiation, unfortunately, it produces. So in other words, um, because it's ultra massive, this radiation would not really be as noticeable. And unfortunately, in the image that was shown to us, there is practically no way for us to see anything. It's just kind of beyond the uh, limitations of the devices used for the discovery. As a matter of fact, for us to see the Hawking radiation better, we do need to find a black hole that's a lot smaller and a lot closer to Earth. Statistically, there should be one within about 30 light years, maybe 50 light years away from um, our planet, but we have not seen one. And that's because they're black holes, they're difficult to see. But a typical small black hole like Cygnus X1a right here, that's a black hole that uh, we've studied pretty well, would definitely emit um, some detectable um, Hawking radiation if it was much closer to us and also if there was no star involved. So uh, in this sense, it's still a mystery, but we do understand that theoretically black holes should emit energy known as Hawking radiation. Now the other mystery that uh, this image doesn't really solve is in regards to the supermassive jets that you see coming out of this black hole. We still don't really know how they're made. We understand what happens to them afterwards, we just don't really understand what happens around the black hole to produce these super super long and very powerful creations. Now as soon as the matter leaves this area and starts um, moving across the skies in this jet, it moves so fast that it usually experiences quite a high time dilation. And um, we've noticed that some jets are really long and really thin and stay thin for a long time. And they only start spreading a little bit later. And the scientists realize that this all depends on the velocity of the actual particles as they come out of the uh, area around the black hole. If these particles move really fast, very, very close to the speed of light, they start experiencing dramatic time dilation. In other words, they actually kind of move in slow motion. They, they literally have their time slow down for them. And so they don't experience interaction with other particles around them until much, much later. As a matter of fact, by the time they start feeling that there's anyone around them, so much time has passed that they are already super far away from the actual black hole. And that's the essence of the jets or what happens afterwards. But how they reach these velocities and what makes them uh, move in such an unusual direction, literally in two opposite directions, is something we don't understand and relates to the last question that was never answered by the image from the EHT. Today we believe that these jets and their formation relates to quantum mechanics. And this is one thing that we've been trying to do for a really long time. We've been trying to explain the so-called effects of quantum gravity. In other words, connecting quantum mechanics and uh, general theory of relativity, including, of course, all of the other Einstein's ideas, and putting them into one um, explanation of physics. Unfortunately, this hasn't happened and will probably not happen for a while. We were hoping that somehow we might be able to explain how gravity is formed uh, using quantum mechanics, because we think that this is how these jets are formed. But so far, still a mystery. We can't really explain, we can't really understand it. And unfortunately, none of the data provided by EHT will help us explain this either. And because quantum mechanics can't really explain gravity in general, and at the same time, the relativity theory cannot explain quantum behavior, these two essentially are still kind of separate. So for many scientists, uh, black holes were that connection. They were hoping that maybe by receiving the data, we'll be able to see how all of this comes together, but still nothing. Maybe in the future? but definitely not yet. But it's actually black holes like this one, like Cygnus X1, that do give us hope, because we believe that small black holes will allow us to understand a lot more about the universe around us, 
and will allow us to explain effects that we haven't really been able to explain so far. So once we discover more of these black holes, it will open up a completely new world for us. Now that we have a picture, and potentially in a future video, of a supermassive black hole, that's great, but now we have to start looking for small black holes in our vicinity. And of course, just like I mentioned in one of the previous videos, black holes might one day also become a way for us to travel across the galaxy and across the universe, because they do provide a lot of, I guess you can call it, free energy. Anyway, so on that note, that's all we know for now. There's definitely going to be more updates later on. But for now, that's all I wanted to mention about Poehi, also known as M87 Ultramassive Black Hole. In one of the future videos, we're going to talk about this other discovery related to its spin. But for now, thank you for watching, please subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through simulations and video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe even consider supporting the channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.